I started recording this stuff and I put them on DAT. Uh, 10 years worth of um, acoustic guitar pieces and each of them I thought, um, I thought, oh, you know, A Midsummer Night's Dream would be a really good title for, for this individual piece. And I thought, well, I can't do that. That's Shakespeare. You can't do that. You've got to be more original. And then there was going to be a meeting with a guy who was a fan at EMI who was in the position of being able to sign me to the label. And on the way to the meeting, I just thought, I'm going to say, I've got a concept here. I'm going to call the whole thing A Midsummer Night's Dream. And this is what I'd like to do. And I'd like some of these pieces to be with orchestra. Um, I thought, let's be outrageous about it. Ask for the earth. and had the meeting and, and I got the earth. They said, fine, yes, really like this stuff. That sounds good. And of course, the benefit was that 10 years previously when I was starting to record this stuff and having it sit there collecting dust on shelves, there was no classic FM. There was Radio 3, of course. Um, but classic FM facilitated a whole new um, way of, of, of playing for me. So um, EMI got right behind it, did a fabulous job promoting the thing, and um, um, it stuck around in, in, in the classical charts for, um, for, for a couple of months. <laughs> So really it was going to be a, a, a tribute to Segovia and probably a tribute to Bach as well originally and then I thought well actually maybe we can make this a bit wider and be influenced by other people like Rodrigo and, and Schubert and, and various other um, people who really can write. Um, and I put it together a, a, a piece at a time. Um, um, I don't read music. I can spell with the aid of a dictionary. It's very, very slow. And um, my take on it is um, I don't want to read it on the stave. I want to be able to feel it. So I want to be able to do something that's, um, uh, in my take on it, to be very emotional about it, to speed up and slow down, rubato, all that, that stuff, the old style romantic way of playing, which was um, very much about that 19th century style of playing, very Jewish, rubato, fine, like that. Uh, so I did an album that's full of that. It's um, uh, just in terms of, of pure playing, I'm, I'm more proud of that than any um, other album I've done because I, I know what it took to get that sounding as precise as it did. But that wasn't the reason for doing it. It's not just the precision. It's because um, I love the fact that you can have a guy like Bach who did music that sounds great, whether it's played on a Cassia tone or a harpsichord or a computer, switched on synthesizers, violins, whatever. It's the most durable music that is indifferent to the music or to the instrument that it's being played on. That's why I don't attempt Bach live most of the time. I'll try once more if you like. Yeah, there you go. Anyway. Um, we started tribute with the most difficult Bach piece I've ever written for guitar. In fact, it was written for violin originally, but um, the Chacon. Uh, so we. I thought if we can record this one, get it done, you know, we'll, we'll get a whole album of, the, of, of uh, this stuff. And um, I recorded some of it. I only get about 30 seconds worth of it, most per day, because it was so difficult. Um, and then overnight, uh, Roger played it back to me the next day, and he said, I've done something to it, and I should let him explain. Well, we love the sound of that Segovia recording from, I don't even know when it comes to the 60s, is it? Oh, no, it's the 1920s and 1930s. Is it? It's extraordinary, yes. 
This stuff's been transferred. I knew that, didn't I? Because I wrote about it on the album. You did. I must have known about know. it. But we love the sound of that so much. So I um, did a bit of analysis on the recording of it. And it and spectrum a, analysis. Spectrum analysis and a bit of what's called match EQing um, t to try and make of our recording something similar, in character at least, without all the distortion. Um, something similar to that original recording and it just sounded gorgeous. As you say, Matt, no top, no bottom really. It just took all the extraneous stuff top and bottom out and left the essential character of a guitar. I remember him saying, um, I've given this an old fashioned sound and suddenly it all came into focus. It had that same sort of sound that I associated with hearing the guitar on tales of the riverbank on TV, that sort of very sweet sound very kind of, well, watery, I, I guess.